And then as this idea grows, before we know it, we're going to easily reach, you know, in the thousands of numbers of people who are interested in counter economic activity, who are looking for alternatives. And then all of a sudden we have a network of people that when you travel across the United States or wherever these things are created, you can connect to other like minded people. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, in a conversation that's being recorded on the 12th of October, 2016, depending what side of the dateline you happen to be residing on. Today, we're going to be talking to our old friend, Derek Bros, who you will remember from interview 1103 on the Corbett Report uh, website, where we were talking about agorism and counter-economics. And today, we're going to be talking about a related subject. Uh, at least, how do you bring a, that, that sort of counter-economic uh, society about? Uh, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. Of course, Derek Bros is at theconsciousresistance.com. He's also at derekbros.contently.com. But today we're going to be talking about freedomcells.org. Derek, thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Yeah, thank you for having me back on, James. All right. Well, let's start with the obvious question for people who are new to the concept. What is a freedom cell? Um, Our little definition we came up that's on the website is freedom cells are peer-to-peer groups organizing themselves in a decentralized manner with the collective goal of asserting the sovereignty of group members through peaceful resistance and the creation of alternative institutions. It's a mouthful, so let's uh, let's break that that down. Uh, Decentralized, so you have a group of ideally eight individuals. That's the key number, and I'll get uh, to the why of that in a moment. But eight to ten people or so, maybe a couple up or down, seven to nine is kind of the ideal. And you get together, again, decentralized, so there's no leader, there's no um, hierarchy or bureaucracy among this. It's just individuals coming together for common goals, what some people term as mutual aid groups. What we're doing, though, with the Freedom Cell concept is making it geared more towards the agorist idea of creating alternative institutions. Because you could have a a mutual aid group that gets together and maybe their their main goal is teaching each other um, about aquaponics. And so they get together and that's their topic and they, they meet every couple of weeks and educate each other. And that is definitely important and that's something that a freedom cell can choose to do. But that isn't necessarily being, that's not, that idea isn't necessarily coming together with the idea of creating something new that can challenge the state in, in itself. And that's what we're geared towards in the long term. Uh, I want it to be friendly, family friendly sounding to those who are only in the horizontal realm and who aren't talking about overthrowing the government, because that's not what we're talking about either. We're talking about competing with it and outgrowing it with something that is more free and more prosperous. And in Konkin's New Libertarian Manifesto, he talked about being able to create pockets of agoras that would appear um, in different areas as the state became less and less sustainable and less influential. And as people sought to do economic activity away from the taxes and all the regulations, which is the counter economy. So we're already seeing the growth of that with cryptocurrencies of a number of different kind and alternative currencies, just the interest in general with people recognizing that the state is um, is limiting us in our, our exchanges and is only an interloper, a third party that is unnecessary. So the concept, though, originally stemmed from uh, this this author, Bob Podolsky, he wrote a book called Flourish, um, and it's about creating alternatives to government as well. And he called them octologues. He's a psychologist, and him and his, his partner that he wrote the book with, they basically did about 20 years of research. And they said in their research, they found that humans seem to work best in groups of eight. There's some historical references as well to uh, back to Greece talking about the same thing. You can find different references throughout history of people talking about small groups of people working well. The idea being that if there's too little people, then you know, you're kind of ineffective. You can't really do a whole lot. But if there's too many too many chiefs, too many people, too many differing opinions, but you can kind of get this ideal number. Bob talks about balancing it with four females and four males. With freedom cells, we're again making it decentralized and allowing people to do what they think works best in their um, their communities. So I've been talking with activists out of Austin, Texas. I'm here in Houston. We've been talking about this for about a year now. Um, Bob's in Arizona. And really the last year we've started to push it more and more until we got the website up now, freedomcells.org. There's a Facebook page and all that information out there. But the whole purpose of this, I guess you could say this Freedom Cell Network is what we're calling it, is to get people to meet in real life. You know, the website is beautiful. It's like any sort of social network, even though we're not asking you to treat it like a social network. You can meet other people. You can see how close people are to you, what their interests, what skills they have to share. The goal, though, is to get people connected in the real world to meet. So um, I can tell you a bit about what we've been doing in Houston, and I would like to also give examples of how this concept could be applied so that people can see tangible, you know, it's not just a concept in the air, but something tangible. So in Houston, 
we started meeting about six months ago, and there's seven of us that consistently meet. We meet every two weeks or so. And some of the ideas that we first got started with is making sure that every uh, every member of this Freedom Cell has a form of encrypted communication. And of course, if we're saying anything that is absolutely sensitive, not saying it anywhere online or any on the, on the phone or anything like that, of course, just practicing good security in general, having that be a practice of uh, our Freedom Cell, making sure that everybody has... Uh, three months worth of backup supply of food for any type of emergency. Making people, making sure we have a emergency slash bug out bag for preparedness, you know. And then teaching each other skills. So making sure everybody in the group has no can make a fire, no CPR. These general skills that you can do. And the idea being that the knowledge and the power isn't focused on one person. It's diffused within the group. So if somebody gets sick or hurt or leaves or whatever, you're not, oh no, there goes our guy who knows how to build fire. The rest of us are screwed. You know, we all have that. And there's going to be certain skills that obviously some people will be better at in different areas and their interests will come into play. But generally though, the idea is to have that group of people, your core group of people that you can count on um, in times of need. And, you know, it doesn't have to be just with the prepping stuff. Uh, I mean, the aquaponics example I mentioned is something that we've actually done. We did that with permaculture where we met and we broke apart different areas of permaculture. Everybody took an assignment and then researched it. We watched the documentary together, came back and taught each other everything that we learned. And, you know, with the idea that we're, we're, our goal is to take this freedom cell concept to work developing it in the city of Houston, but towards the idea of buying land um, sometime next year to start the intentional communities like you were mentioning earlier, James, because that's the truth is in order to lay the ground for the Agora for this future free society, a possible stateless society, or at least more free than we are now, like we can't just continue to rely on voting or believing that something like violence is going to work, you know, or any of those, you know, those, those ideas have, have long passed their relevance. And the only thing that really matters at this point is to create something new. And when, the more research I do into agorism and just living my own lifestyle, I realize like I have to connect with other people. We have to start building these, these cells. And I like the name, the reason the freedom cell name also comes from the idea of like, you know, they talk about terror cells. We're trying to retake the language and make it, you know, a freedom cell, a cell of people based about, upon the principles of sovereignty and freedom and mutual aid and education each other and skill sharing and things like that. And another way to look at it, I see each of these individual cells as being sort of like the cellular body. You know, we're connecting to create a larger body and larger network that can replace the old. And the concept being though, so you're in wherever you're at, start looking for people that are like-minded, that have similar interests, use the Freedom Cell Network website, go on there and sign up, and it'll immediately tell you how many people are within a certain range of you. It's also connected to a larger website that's called the Community Connector. There's great people on there as well. They're not necessarily um, anarchist or Freedom Cell-minded, but they're concerned generally about a lot of topics, so it's a great way to connect with a larger network that exists within what we're building. So that, you know, you start to find people. Another good way is go to farmer's markets, go to arts markets, where there's going to be other people who are already sort of in the counter economy, whether they realize it or not, and talking to them about, hey, this is really cool. You know, you get to come out here and you're not taxed and you just make some money. You know, have you ever heard of Bitcoin? Maybe we can do that. You know, just get those conversations. It's going to take some work if you're serious about developing this. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm the one guy in my community. There's like nobody here that's awake anywhere. Maybe in the beginning, you might have to be that one person, you know, out there really trying to spread skills, or maybe you might have to make a little bit of drive to get to somebody else. But I think that the idea will grow. And um, as we've seen it, as we started to talk about it, I've been contacted from Australia, Austra um, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Brazil, um, all over the US, people saying, hey, we call them freedom hubs, we call them freedom centers, we call them the tribe, this and that, people who are just working on similar ideas, and at the same time coming to a similar uh, concept. And to me, it just, you know, however you want to look at it, the ideas in the global consciousness right now, and I think maybe it's time for us to seize this idea of coming together in smaller groups that can outweigh the old. Um, and so you, once you develop your group and you have your core group of, you don't necessarily need to wait till you get eight either to start. If you, we started out with just a couple of us, start with what you have, you know, and develop from there. It's the important, even if you have one other person that you can count on in time of need, um, that that's, that's valuable, you know, and it'll grow. So start with that. The idea being though, once you have that eight core group of people, each of those individuals could turn around and start another freedom cell. So like you have the inner cadre, for example, is what my friend refers it to. And in the outer cadre, like our main freedom cell in Houston, we have, we're, we're, most of us are centered around the downtown area, but some of us are coming from other parts of town. Um, and that's okay for the first one. But ideally, once we get this, this idea really hardened, then we want everybody to go back to their particular parts of town, their neighborhoods, and then start a freedom cell there. So then you have 
eight groups of eight to 10 people spread across the city of Houston, you know, and then as this idea grows, before we know it, we're going to easily reach, you know, in the thousands of numbers of people who are interested in counter economic activity, who are looking for alternatives. And then all of a sudden, we have a network of people that when you travel across the United States, or wherever these things are created, you can connect to other like minded people, you can uh, still do these economic exchanges. And I just see so much potential in the concept of it's truly unlimited, um, how it can be applied. You know, I'm just focused on the prepping and the skill sharing, but um, I've got a host of other ideas and ways that I think that it could be used. And we're really just pushing the ball out there. The website is there. It's available. It's been up for a couple months, but we're really starting to push it now with this interview, actually. And um, hoping that last time when I did the interview with you, James, I got a great response from people. I, tons of contacts came from that interview, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. People asking me more questions about agorism or how they could get involved or uh, just tons of things. And this is the tool. So I hope all those people who have seen that video will go further and check out the Freedom Cell uh, Network website and do some digging for themselves, see what concepts they find. We've already got different cells created on there. And there's a bunch of videos that I've done, 10 tips for building a freedom cell. There's an introduction to the website that shows you how to use it and everything. Um, and you know, plenty of other ideas on there. So we're really just at that point now where, oh, it looks like we just got a new sign up in Spain. So I mean, see, it's happening everywhere. And it's it's awesome to, to see that happen. Um, and I hope that, that more people will take an interest. Um, if you want, I can also give more examples of how it can be used. I certainly do. But May, maybe sure. I can ask a question first, because I, you don't have to sell me on the concept. I already agree <laughs> that this is important and that we have to start doing this if we want any, if we have any chance whatsoever of, of outgrowing the state. Um, but for me out in rural Western Japan, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's extremely difficult to find like-minded people. Is there any value to starting a freedom cell or at least getting contacts in the virtual space that could then become a intentional community later down the road? I do think so, because even if the only thing you can do at the moment is to connect through other people through the website, you know, because like I said, we're, we're trying to emphasize don't just treat this like another social network that you sign up for and, and visit every now and then. Like Use this specifically as a way to meet people. The great thing is when you sign up, there's things like you can say, I'm offering 10 barrels of apples, maybe you're growing that, you're growing your own food, you can offer things to other people, they can connect, and really it'll facil facilitate all kinds of exchanges um, without third-party involvement. And if that's as far as you can do right now, is just, you know, you create a freedom cell virtually from wherever you are, and look for others, maybe still engage with others in other places, and learn and watch their progress, that I think is going to be, would still be helpful in the end, you know, and like you said, maybe down the line that evolves towards something like an actual intentional community. Um, because I'm, I'm constantly being contacted by people. Just recently, I got a message from a lady somewhere here in Texas who said she's got, you know, 20 something acres just basically sitting still waiting for a freedom cell to come take advantage of it because she's alone out there. And, you know, so there's a lot of opportunities like that. And I think if we just stay in the conversation with each other, uh, this network will grow and the opportunities for actually building the real world freedom cells will, will come along with that. All right, then give us a tactile sense of what your group does and how it functions. Sure. So this is, this is a really exciting time to be talking to you. Um, because just this past weekend, myself and two other friends of mine who are other activists involved with the Houston Freethinkers community that I helped uh, launch in 2010, we just recently got a house now that we're using, using as a staging ground to develop the Freedom Cell concept. Um, it's called the Freethinker House. It's our community space that we use for meetings and you know screenings, all kinds of events. It's a big property. We've got a good amount of land here, and the landlord has basically said, hey, do whatever you want, front yard gardens, backyard gardens, whatever. So this past weekend, we had a crew of people come out, volunteers from the community, and we started to build our community garden here. And this, we're basically going to take the Freedom Cell concept and use this as the staging ground to show people this is what we can do. We're going to track each of our individual progress. Like One of my roommates is still working a 50 to 60 hour a week job that he hates, but he's trying to get off the banks. He's trying to get out of that system. We're going to document his, pro his progress my progress, each of us, and showing the house how people can, with a limited amount of space, not only can grow food, um, we're going to brew our own kombucha, just come up with all kinds of different ideas for counter economic activity that can allow us to have more uh, independence in our lives. So I'm really excited about that. For anybody who wants to check that, we uh, just put up a Facebook page. I'll send you these links, James. But the Freethinker House on Facebook is, we're basically going to be doing 10 to 15 minute weekly updates of this is what we're working on this week. This is how we're to show people that you, this is possible in all different circumstances. You know, we're not all in the same circumstance, definitely. And uh, we want to use that as a space to show that. So if anybody's interested in supporting that, um, you can check us there. 
And a lot of these ideas here that we're talking, that I'm about to share with you are coming through what we're doing in this house. Uh, the last book that I'm working on for the Conscious Resistance series is going to be all about how to build this inten these intentional communities. And everything we're working on now, literally, we're just developing the concept. Everything we share and learn over the next six months to a year will go into that book and will be shared as hopefully just a handbook on here's how to create conscious agoras and using freedom cells and, and growing it. And again, back to it being a cultural movement, I think that before we can actually change the economics, we can still do economic exchanges, but if the mindset that this is a necessary action in order to move past the state towards more freedom, if that groundwork hasn't been laid, then it's just essentially, okay, we're doing economic exchanges outside the state, but there's no movement behind it. There's no philosophy behind it. There's no thought behind it. And we want to be able to change that. We want to be able to connect with Houston's artist community and music community and show them the value of ideas like agorism, even if we're not getting them all to read the New Libertarian Manifesto, but getting them to understand through the marketplaces that we're going to create and the events that we're going to host here that this is what we're trying to build. You know, there's there's no government involvement. There's gray and black market. And then hopefully along the way also converting some of these uh, more open-minded people to the actual philosophy of freedom. You know, but it's, it's for us, it starts with bringing people together, creating the space to do that. And that's what this house is going to allow us to do. So we're going to use the concept of freedom cells to host, again, the meetings. The meetings themselves are just bringing people together, introducing them to the ideas of agorism. So that alone is just spreading. That's one more mind that is working on understanding the concept of agorism. Um, we want to use it to develop urban farming revenue, really try to. There's some great examples out there on YouTube. You can see people with less than half an acre making $70,000 a year off the crops that they grow. You know, We have a bit more than that, and we have some experience the three of us do with, with gardening, urban gardening, and we're going to be very um, careful with what we're growing, finding local restaurants that want to buy it directly from us, the crops that we're growing. And of course, this will be done without reporting it to Uncle Sam or anything like that. So that'll be, and even better if we can find local restaurants or vendors who are willing to take, uh, you know, precious metals or some other, other alternative, or even just a direct barter. Um, we're, we're excited to do that as well. So Urban farming is definitely going to be a, a play a big role in how we develop the freedom cell concept here. And again, as I mentioned, the art, artist and music community, we plan to have take the food that we're growing here and have like pop up restaurants like in the house and basically invite people to come out and hear some music and check this out. And again, let them know everything here was grown in our backyard without any regulation, without any licenses, without any interference. And basically just using all of our actions, getting involved in the culture itself to propagate the message of agorism and, and freedom cells. Um, and, you know, talked about doing maker spaces. There's a really great group here that works on 3D printing a lot. We want to do some agorist action related to 3D printing. So the concept is, is really an open-ended concept that has unlimited potential. Um, we talked about prepping. We're talking about emergency preparedness in general, talking about food, privacy. One other aspect of it that I think will come down the line, and this is Usually not the first thing I lead with when explaining freedom cells to people because some people are, you know, you have to be sell, you sell them on the horizontal methods, you know, the community gardening and such. But I do believe it will also become a valuable tool for us defending ourselves against violent agents of the state, whether that's police officers, IRS agents, CPS agents who want to come steal your kids because you're using Kratom or cannabis or because they don't like the, you don't want to vaccinate your kids or whatever it may be. Um, we want it to be a mutual support group using con um, apps like Self 411 and others that allow for emergency alert system. So you put th that idea together, you have your freedom cell, and again, you've got different cells spread throughout the city. When we get to this point, if you're getting pulled over and you need some assistance, you need somebody to come back up to film to make sure you're safe, or you literally just need you know, people to come defend your family from agents of the state. We've seen examples out there where individuals uh, will – stop a cop from arresting somebody in the neighborhood. There's a great one out there of like a 16 year old girl getting grabbed by this officer. Who's not, he was not even in, you know, officer's uniform. He was totally in plain clothes trying to grab this girl and the mom and some people from the community basically just getting in the way and interfering and stopping it from happening. But it was totally reactive. It was totally spur of the moment. Um, when I go to a lot of these tense situations where there's heavy police presence, I usually look on the activist side and I see a lot of chaos of people just like, fighting over which cause is right and who wants to be heard on the bullhorn and this and that. And I look across the street and I see these heavily militarized police officers who I know have a plan that are prepared for whatever is coming. And we need to have a plan for that. So I suggest that Freedom Cells also do role playing. Somebody be the jerk off cop and somebody be the victim and everybody else think, you know, really think about how you would respond to that situation. Because for me, I played it out in my head and it's not about being macho or trying to be the hero, but I literally don't think I could just sit there and watch somebody get beat up down in front of me, you know. But if one person rushes a cop, you're going to get shot. 
you know, then you have two people killed. But if a group of people peacefully, uh, nonviolently, but assertively resist an officer, maybe you're in a state that's open where open carry is legal and you just show the officer like, hey, you know, get off that person. Stop, like, you know, disarm them, get them in their car. Like HPD is no longer welcome in our community. Send that message back there. When we start getting to the point where our communities are able to actually do that and they start seeing examples of this pop up, that's when the the later third and fourth stages of agorism that Samuel Conkin talked about when these private defense agencies where we're actually able to start defending ourselves against the state. That is when I believe we're shifting into a whole new phase of actual defense. You know, And again, it's not about violence or insurrection or anything like that. It's about defense against these people who are attempting to oppress and limit our freedom. And you know, anybody, any fan of your work knows that they're complete crazy tyrants. So it's about defending our communities. I think freedom cells can also be an example of that. You know, one other example I've seen that similar in a similar way is uh, in Detroit when there was the water shut off, shut off the total corporate takeover of Detroit, and then the regular citizens getting their water cut off. They uh, some of the guys out there they call them um, groups of angels. And basically, it's they form uh, human chains around people's houses when they try to come turn off their water, and they successfully kept you know water on for plenty of people who. People who owed a little bit of money, but compared to the corporations who owe billions, you know, they, they get to keep their, their facilities going. So it was successful in that case. I have friends in Austin who are also working on the Freedom Cell concept who've been successful with defending families against CPS. Um, so, again, defense, education, spreading knowledge, preparation, um, just organizing. The concept has unlimited potential, and I really hope that everyone listening will, will go to freedomcells.org check it out, join, start a cell in your community if you don't see one. And even if, you know, as you were saying, James, even if you're the only person where you're at, uh, still follow the movements to be a part of it, you know, help spread the ideas because the more they spread, then the more people are likely to take them up. And I, and one other, you know, last piece of advice that I have to anybody that's starting a freedom cell or hub or whatever you want to call it, the name's not really important ultimately, it's the concept, is to be a good marketer, a good promoter for this idea. If it works for you, if it's helping you, you, you know, get fulfillment and your life is flourishing and you're getting all these benefits out of it, then let everybody know. Let the people know, look, I've developed, I've came into this new idea. I have a group of friends and we're all teaching each other skills. We're growing our own food and it's really awesome so that people understand there's value to it and they want to get involved because ultimately, you know, the, again, the answers aren't going to come in any, any sort of ballot box on November 8th. Um, and they're not going to come through insurrection against the state, but there's a great, great, great opportunity for us to create something brand new that hasn't been seen. It's just going to take a bit of work for us to get there. So I hope you guys will check out Freedom Cells. I hope so, too. You raise such an important point that the enemies of liberty are organized and prepared and they know how to handle these situations. And the defenders of liberty, generally speaking, are like chickens running around with their heads cut off, not really having prepared for these types of situations. So I think that is an important point of it, but I can imagine this all from the perspective of the, the social engineers who, I mean, freedom cell might be the right word because, oh, the, this cancer of freedom is metastasizing. We have to stamp it out here and there. I mean, that's, that's the important point of this. It's not just about preparing yourself and your family. It's not just about getting drawing together like-minded people and getting prepared in that way, but it's also creating the alternative structures that other people who may never have even thought about this can then come into without even necessarily understanding why or what's happening, but they are drawn into it because it is an alternative structure that exists. And hey, this is flourishing. And look at all these people who are doing all of this. And wow, we actually don't need government to do everything for us. I mean, it, this answers the, the problem that people have. Well, what's your solution? Yeah, we know there's a problem, but what's your, what's your alternative? Well, if we don't start building the alternative, we'll never have an answer to that. So I think this is extremely important work. I don't want to over-talk it here because there's a lot to go through, but we will direct people once again to freedomcells.org where they can see all of those videos that you talked about that introduce the concept and talk about how to build up a freedom cell and interviews about this subject. So uh, we'll direct people there once again. And I'm assuming, I, I certainly hope you'll be back on in the future to talk more about your own freedom cell and the updates to what's going on in that regard. But uh, where can people follow your own work? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, James. I really appreciate it again. Uh, of course, most of my content is always on the consciousresistance.com, specifically for the freedom cells. I would follow uh, the Freethinker House on Facebook. We're also launching a Patreon this week that basically will give behind the scenes of everything we do. Most of it's going to be all public, but there's going to be some like, like more detailed explanations of, hey, here's how we're actually doing this process for people who want to support further. And 
we're really trying to get people to see that we want to take the bumps and the bruises and the ups and downs and show you what doesn't work and be very transparent and open. Like, hey, guys, we tried to do this concept. We thought it was going to make us a good amount of money and help us quit our jobs, but it backfired because of this. Or we had state interference in this, you know, and really just give people the understanding. So that will be on the Freethinker House on Facebook. I'll send you that link and also through the Patreon there. And uh, I would love to come back and do an update in a couple months or so. Excellent. Well, we're looking forward to it. In the meantime, people can go to freedomcells.org. Org. And we'll put the link, of course, in the show notes, along with all the other uh, links that you're talking about there and resources for people to get studied up on this important subject. Derek Bros, thank you again for coming on the program. Thank you. The Federal Reserve, the heart of the American banking system. For over 100 years, it has operated in the shadows, controlling America's money supply in total secrecy. So all that information is available uh, in our commercial paper program. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks. Any bank that has uh, access to the U.S. uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Tell us who they are. No. Until now. 100 years ago, in 1913, the Fed was created. Fractional reserve banking. The legal authority to do it. Take over of monetary policy. Are conducted by the Federal Reserve Banks. They are banks. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Century of Enslavement. The history of the Federal Reserve. Watch the documentary for free at corporatereport.com slash Federal Reserve and purchase a copy on DVD to help support The Corbett Report today.